गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सरस्वती फाउंडेशन ऑर्थो टीवी एंड आई फिक्स फाउंडेशन लेट मी वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू दिस स्पेशल एपिसोड ऑन रिमेम्बरिंग जॉय पाटनकर इट्स इज फिफ्टी एथ डेथ एनिवर्सरी जॉय वॉज विथ अस एंड ही पास अवे ऑन फोर्थ ऑफ सप्टेंबर टू थाउजेंड सिक्स एंड वॉट बेटर डे टू रिमेंबर हिम दैन द टीचर्स डे so at the first let me wish all my teachers a very very happy teachers day and thank you very much for agreeing to be here and the students who have now become exemplary teachers in their own rights are all here too and i would welcome all the people who have agreed to be part of this wonderful meeting tonight and i hope it's going to be informative as well as entertaining so a mediocre teacher just tells the good teacher explains the superior teacher demonstrates but a great teacher inspires and we all know that every person here on this forum today is an exemplary teacher who inspires and we have been lucky that our teachers gave us such a teaching that we have all learned how to inspire other people and continue to carry forward the legacy joy was such a person who inspired and we shall be hearing more about joy as we go along and listen to all these tall words today so let the at the outset i would ask ashok to first play a video which has been compiled by joy's children in his memory apurva kopi koshodnyam vigyate tava bharati व्ययतो वृद्धि आयाति शय आयाति संचयात ओ गॉड इज सरस्वती योर ट्रेजर इज यूनिक इन नेचर इट इंक्रीज इज वेन इट इज फ्रीली स्पेंट एंड गेट्स डिस्ट्रॉयड इफ इट इज जॉय आवर बाबा लिव्ड बाय दिस सुभाषित ही लव टू लर्न एंड शेयर हिज नॉलेज वेदर दैट वॉज इन लेक्चर हॉल्स अक्रॉस द ग्लोब और ड्यूरिंग लॉन्ग कार राइड्स विथ हिज फैमिली He was always a sight for sore eyes and a balm for the soul. We loved him, looked up to him, and learned so so much from him. One and a half decades have gone by in the blink of an eye. We miss him every minute of every day, and imagine that he would have loved to witness our lives and all our achievements. He may not be of this realm, but we include him in every moment. We know that he watches over us and he will always be the joy of our lives. We know that his family, his friends, colleagues and students all miss him dearly, but we all cherish his memory and let it live on. As Thomas Campbell wrote, but strew his ashes to the wind, whose sword a voice has served mankind, and is he dead whose glorious mind lifts thine on high? to live in hearts we leave behind is not to die thank you very much for sharing that video malvika yash and nikki joy is wonderful children who put together this collage highlighting his younger days and their memories with him with those little words let me first get to the first pair that we have today dr ingar harikar and dr ram chadda we know that both of these are masters in communication and both of them are spine surgeons so without much ado let me invite ram to talk to us about the back school communication skills what did he learn from dr ingar harikar who was his teacher at sain hospital and head of unit and we'll invite dr ingarikar to respond to his talk after that over to you ram good afternoon everybody it's with a very heavy heart that i'm speaking today i normally seem to be unflinched and do not get affected however i share more things than one with joy i happen to be born in 
I happened to have entered med school in 1980. Became orthopedic surgeons together. I've been co-lecturers, dear friends. Each one of you have been my teacher. Joy inspired me in more ways than one. I speak on behalf of all students with complete obeisance to all our teachers. Few of us with us today and few no more. Communication skills, an integral part of the compassionate, empathetic doctor is something that I learned over the years. Many years back, in the days of our youthful exuberance, we celebrated this correction of a scoliosis, not realizing that we had probably given a permanent neurological deficit to a young human being. The young human being was left out of focus and the caregiver stripped me bare. I was extremely shattered, unhappy, but I always believed mistakes will happen due to helplessness and negligence for nobody wins all the time. Nobody loses all the time. If my mother made a hundred chapatis, there would be one which would not be as good. If my child created this work of craft with his hands, they would all be different. And I always look up and look back to what this man said to me almost three and a half decades back when I entered orthopedics, you have to be charming yet correct. And look at him, the look in his eyes, say it all. He always believed truth and transparency build trust. But how can we be truthful and transparent when we face such situations? This is where open and frank communication comes in place. It's a creative art that has to be developed throughout our medical career. We are learning it each day. It's a lifelong pursuit. None of us are born equal, but all of us have an equal opportunity to develop our talents. Yes, advice and counseling are two most frequent treatments we use, especially looking after the back and the neck. Mental health consultations today are very common and essential. Depression and anxiety. The perils of the past make us depressed. Fear of the future make us anxious. And what we need is advice and counseling. Nothing in the world bothers you as much as your own mind. In fact, when others seem to be bothering you, it's not others, it's your own mind. And what my teachers taught me was listen to the patients, respect their views, have open communication about all treatment preferences, discuss all management options, allow your patients to ask all the questions they want. Ensure that they have understood. Be aware of their languages, their cultural influences, and compensate for all their communication issues. Remember, we as doctors are neither above them nor below them, but beside them. We have to hand hold them. What we can offer is to uplift their state of mind. And it's not just talking to them. These are non-verbal skills. It has to be a shared understanding and open attentive posture, eye-to-eye -eye contact, active listening, nodding, ensuring that they tell their entire story without interruption, open-ended questions. It's the mind which actually plays games. The mind is great if it's your servant, but it's a very, very dangerous master. 
And when we do look at back surgery, and that's what I learned, it's fear and grief, two things which shatter the patient and the caregiver. Why fear? Fear, yes, there is a real fear, but most of it is perceived fear. What is fear? It's false evidence appearing real. And how do we react? We either freeze, we flight, or we fight back. Our duty as the person who has been given the right to touch them is to share the real fear and yet allay the perceived fear. I always follow what is called the Elizabeth Kubler Ross's five stages of grief, and it is right from denying that they need surgery to accepting that they need surgery. And that's grief for them to begin with, but you have to walk them through. They'll be they'll deny it first, then they'll be angry, then they'll bargain. Why is it that they are being operated? They'll get depressed, but then finally they'll agree and accept that there is no other way out. It's the past that is bothering them, the peril and the fear of the future. Tell them to be pragmatic of the present. Always start with why you are offering them surgery. Then how and what? Don't tell them that this is what is going to be done. No, we need to tell them why we are doing what we are doing. It's the purpose. We should tell them that we as surgeons can alter structure, alter anatomy, which will improve and enhance function and physiology. The why comes before the how and comes much before the what. Unfortunately, as doctors, we are always going to face this. There's a dichotomy between diagnosis and treatment. Diagnosis is totally built on suspicion, doubt, skepticism. And treatment, it's based on faith, belief, and trust. They are poles apart. Hence the worries and concerns. Doctor, can medicines help? Will bracing help my child? How safe is the surgery? Is surgery the only option? Are there any side effects of the surgery? What if she gets infection? Can she get paralyzed forever? Doctor, can the surgery fail? Could she need repeat or revision surgeries? Doctor, what would you do if she is your daughter or sister? Doctor, can you guarantee 100% success? These are questions we are asked every day in and day out. Should we be concerned about radiation hazards? And finally, in our country, how much would it cost, doctor? Please understand, our questions have to be answered, each one of them, but not objectively, more subjectively, personally, connecting with each question and giving them an answer they accept and believe in. This takes time. We have to follow the anagram of listen and silent. Silently listen. It's the brain that's going to take time to accept and it's going to be your brain that has to connect with them. And finally, it's your heart that has to connect with them. Counseling should end in the clinic. Please remember, do not restart counseling the patient after you've admitted the patient. Take your consent even in the clinic. Don't run two minutes before the surgery and please sign this form. This is not done. Everything has to be done earlier in informed consent. Do no harm. Tell them nature of treatment, alternatives, benefits, opportunities, risks, everything. What will happen if they don't get treated or operated? In the hospital, only spread positivity. Tell them about safety in surgery. Tell them about technology, how things are good. Despite all this, people will come and go. Some will love you. Some will test you. Some will leave you and some will bless you. Please be patient. Everything happens for a reason. Remember, Samuel Beckett said, ever tried, ever failed, no matter. Try again. Fail again fail better. You should be willing to fail if you want to win. If you cannot accept failure, you cannot ever win. To succeed, you have to fail first. Failure is a part of success. This is what they taught me and taught Joy 1986 onwards. 35 years down the line, where are we today? Well, I have 
put it all down and distilled it for you, which is available from Dr. Guliana's advice in his book. Do the right thing. Meticulously document any conflict you may have or discuss with the patient before, during or after. Never lose your temper. Stay out of danger. Never be distressed by insistent patients. <laughs> Investigate the patient's mental state. Never shirk away from difficult patients. Believe that common sense is not a gift. It's a punishment because you have to deal with everyone who doesn't have it. Tough times never last. Tough people do. And if you are going through hell, just keep going. Get up, get dressed and be there. Be optimistic. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. And if in trouble, and we would be each day in and day out, especially if you're treating spine backing, you can only make unhappy people less unhappy. When you treat them, don't just look but see. Don't just hear but listen. Don't just touch but feel. Never show pity but compassion. Don't show sympathy, show empathy, connect to them. Be truthful and transparent and build trust. The most important thing I learned from my teachers, and I would be happy if even one of you takes this home. Don't practice for income, but for outcome. Move from knowledge to wisdom. Move from selfishness to selflessness to altruism. Whatever you do should be for the good, the larger good for everybody in the world. Move from information to reformation to transformation. Don't just do your duty. Find your calling. Don't indulge in just contact or yoga jog. Connect. There should be sanjog. We've been doing our duty for too long and that's Kriya. It's time we move to karma. That's the time that we'll move from treatment to healing. Always remember what Fritzkoff Nansen, the Nobel Prize winner for peace, said 100 years back in 1921. He was a Nobel Prize winner, Norwegian explorer. He said the difficult is what takes a little time. The impossible is what takes a little longer. There's nothing impossible. Chase perfection will catch excellence. Please remember, there is no perfect world. How much ever you may want to believe there is, it's almost 20 years since this episode. Next week it will be so. There is no perfect world. Thank you for allowing me to connect with each one of you. At the end of this presentation, you may love me or you may hate me. If you love me, I shall be in your world. And if you hate me, no problem. I'll be on your mind for much longer. Thank you very much for a patient hearing. God bless you all. Over to you, Professor Ingalaleka. Good evening, everybody. I, I, I presume you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear. OK. Uh, I met Joy Patankar first when he was a school going boy. My, a very close friend of mine, Dr. Lokeshwar, pediatrician, and me, we used to go to Joy's mother's maternity home to see postnatal children. And that is where Joy in Returning from his school, bubbling all the time, with full of energy, a bundle of joy. I, I met him right then. And right on the first day, he made a great impression on me as a very happy, energetic, intelligent child. Of course, thereafter, um, I had an opportunity to be around him, both as a unit head and a teacher. And we always found him to be one of the bright blue-eyed boys who would make a mark in the world. And he did make a mark in the world on whatever short span of life God had given him. Well, friends, um, it's a Teacher's Day special, and I'm feeling extremely proud. Like I can see many of my students here. Ram 
has been one of my students and there's nothing nothing more fulfilling and nothing that makes one feel proud than when his student is seen walking ahead of him creating tracks and paths in which the teacher would walk would like to take his steps it's something other thing which happened many years ago well ram i feel extremely proud of you and i i am very happy that the the important skill of communication with the patient taking into account the whole comprehensive situation of the patient um, is something which ram is practicing is uh, propagating and i i know for sure and even his students are taking that well friends uh, i have just want to put out one thought here even in today's world with internet and uh, so many things people still want you like an old timer doctor way back in 1974 75 26 when we started our back clinic at sain hospital and even my own setup we did a survey of a, a small study of people why people are unsatisfied with the previous doctor why did they come to us and we found a, a, a different varieties of reason and one of the important group of reasons was the communication skill uh, there is a very typical sentences patients would quote they would say acha doctor hai magar khaddu se bahut acha surgeon hai magar paise ka lalchi hai excellent doctor hai magar kuch problem aa gaya to bhag jata hai बहुत अच्छा डॉक्टर है मगर नियत अच्छी नहीं है इन अदर वर्ड्स पेशेंट्स नॉट ओनली वांटेड यू एज ए डॉक्टर एज अ सर्जन दे वांटेड यू टू बी मच मच मोर देन दैट एंड द होल सेक्शन और द होल दिस लिस्ट ऑफ एक्सक्यूजेस फॉर व्हिच दे डिजर्टेड द प्रीवियस सर्जन्स एंड केम टू अस वेयर ऑल रिलेटेड टू द माइंड साइड of the body mind nexus well earlier we recognized the better it was and that that's how the whole management pattern the whole uh, behavior pattern the treatment pattern everything evolved entirely out of that we were one of the earlier ones way back in 1982 to publish the first ever work on body and mind and back pain and mind in india well friends on a teachers day what can a teacher give he can give all that he wants all that he has earned as a teacher out of his patients out of his colleagues out of his friends and out of his students I have never failed to learn something or other from patients lots of my patients have taught me a small thing a second thing a third thing and fourth thing and today whatever i am is a concoction made of not only something that has come from my seniors but from my juniors and all that has enriched my way of communicating with the people that's the way i teach my students to i always tell my students any time if you come across a patient wherever in the outdoor indoors anywhere that person must become your lifetime friend irrespective of under which unit he is admitted and under whom he is being treated when he comes back give him a smile when he enters your room please offer him a seat to sit down ask him to sit down please sit down treat a human being like a human being looking straight into his eyes let the patient be convinced that you are genuinely interested in his well being let this not be a drama let this not be a, a phony presentation let him be genuinely feeling that and you will always be one of their favorites well friends one of my very senior family members once told me behave through the life like what you would want people to talk at the time of your condolences when you are cremated what you what you want people to talk about you during those few minutes 
even when you're not there, even when you cannot hear, you're not even know. For those few minutes, struggle through the life, go through the life in a very clean, human, humane manner, and you have achieved everything that one would want in life. Well, friends, once again, I, I thank Bitti for calling all of us here to remember join and I thank you all once again. Ram, I feel proud of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for those pearls of wisdom. It, it indeed reminds us of our signed days and it's like morning meeting today. You get that nostalgic feeling looking at all familiar faces around you. A lot from Cyan, a lot of people have joined. I can see, uh, and I would like to welcome Dr. John Clegg and Sally Scott from UK, who are very closely associated with Joy. Dr. Nikhil Pradhan, again from Warrington, who was my registrar and uh, in very closely associated with Joy. So the UK guys seem to have woken up. I hope we are going to win today, India, guys. So on that note, I'm going to hand over to Taral to invite the next pair of... Uh, Dr. Lard and Dr. Warrior. Over to you, Taran. Yeah, thanks, Sandeep. You know, it's really a <laughs> celebration here, Teacher's Day celebration, people joining from India and abroad. And, you know, it's it's real joy to see Joy's family, the actual family and family which he built up outside uh, his house. And uh, two of uh, his family members, uh, which have been teachers and students, uh, both are teachers to us, Sudhir and Dr. Lard. And uh, first over to you, Sudhir. Uh, Dr. Lard is an inspiration. I'm sure, Sudhir, are you perspiring? Please let us know. Uh, and please start uh, the second part of today's uh, five series match. Sudhir, over to you. Thanks, Karal. Uh, is my screen uh, shared right now? Yes. Yeah, Yosh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Joy. He brought exactly that into so many lives. And I'm so fortunate that one of them was mine. I was basically from JJ and uh, not really welcome at Cyan. But I did join Dr. Lard at Lard Clinic. Uh, I was with Dr. B.B. Joshi. And so we were at Lard Clinic, and there was my association with Dr. Lard, and therefore, with Cyan Hospital. Right from the time that I joined Lard Clinic, I realized that Joy was different. He understood so many different aspects of what we were doing. And this is one picture that we took years and years ago when the first CNC machine was installed in a surgical company. And he was following Dr. Lard's footsteps of assisting the industry to keep pace with the advances of medicine and orthopedics so that they could service us to give our patients the best outcomes. Not only did he know all of that, he stepped out into the garden or into the forest and he knew everything about every plant, every tree. He had two lovely hounds in Pandarpur. We had such wonderful times with him. And whenever you ran into a problem, whether it was flying a kite, you just went to Joy and he would sort it out for you. And come evening, he would wax eloquent on any topic under the sun. He lived life king size. He was dissatisfied with status quo. He was the original disruptor. He disrupted everything for the betterment of everything. And whatever he did, he did with class. This is one of those absolutely priceless uh, mementos I have from 1995, designed by Joy. This was the third fracture fixation course. And this is the tie I still cherish. It must be over 20 years old now. But it's really one of those that Joy thought about. And each of those things have enduring values. Well, with those words, I come to Professor Lard, his teacher. And uh, we all know that a great teacher shows you how to inspire yourself. They don't show you magic. They show you how to make your own magic. So the creator of so much magic and so many magicians is Professor Lard. Almost everyone in this picture headed a department or a unit 
and is a successful orthopedic surgeon himself. These are the ones that were in the department that when I interacted with the department as a student, when I went there, I was afraid because Ram and uh, Shekhar would ask us questions about patients and I couldn't answer them. Coming from JJ, the answers were always, well, you know, it depends upon, etc. But <clears throat> coming to Dr. Lard, sir, you were an exceptional young orthopedic surgeon. Most of your colleagues, as soon as they qualified, they plunged into practice to make a name, to build a legacy and an empire. You chose to mentor and teach. You were at Sion Hospital five days a week, every single day till you retired. And you asked of your students, where were you for morning class? Each and every student of yours still remembers that. So you started the fracture clinic, the trauma ward, you brought in AO, you brought in x fakes you did all of this. Why, sir, did you not want to make a name for yourself? And why did you want to teach us? Sudhir, you need to share your screen again. No, I want Dr. Lard to speak now. Okay, okay. Sir, you're muted, sir. Mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. So there, uh, I always felt, uh, you know, in uh, there is a saying in Sanskrit, Prapte to Shodashe Varashe, Putra Mitra Samachara. Father tells the son, the minute is 16 years, you are almost an adult and must share. The main part of is I always believe that word teaching is long, wrong. The correct word is learning. And both teacher and the taught learn. And let me tell you today, I feel when people like Joy is no more, you are there, Ram is there, Shekhar is there, the way they have progressed, I feel I am un un most uneducated because I am not so good at technology. But I will tell you one thing. You must be like a Ratna Parchi. You must find out who is the talent. And that morning class was not regimentation. Effort to find a talent. And given opportunity because most of the young doctors are introverts. They don't open up. And I found out the ideal way to do is to make them speak, make them read, and reduce their effort because we are such a big syllabus. And in that, I used to discuss with a lot of them. I discussed with you, we join everybody. And I thought that instead of monologue, dialogue is better. And that's how, and I did see it when I went abroad. But it made me think when I started this as to how good these uh, young people were. And it right from the basics to the top. So, I thought that a teacher needs to stimulate. My friend, Professor Manu Kothari said, his teacher is like a thousand priests. What is the difference? The priest preaches and leaves. The teacher teaches and produces a product which helps the society. So, two important things in life which I learned. One, learning process is continuous. It never stops. And second, you must inspire. Today I was told that you have to perspire to inspire. Joy didn't have to perspire because his inspiration was there. That is his wife. You get my <laughs> point? Now today we are talking about Joy's style and not about their secrets which can have another meeting. But I know for certain that you need an inspiration. You need an inspiration. Perspiration brings efforts out of you. Inspiration brings out product out of you. So if you have to be productivity, you have to think all the time. And one of the finest people I met would always in a thinking mode was Joy Patanta. And I always said, it is always said, what is there in the name? Very much. Joy Prude. Joy was his name because he brought 
happiness to everybody whom he met so i think as a as a as a colleague of yours what enlightened me and made me think and more and more that every teacher has to be committed honestly to part that knowledge to help your colleagues that he progresses and reduce his perspiration and right. that you reduce his perspiration that is what is inspiration fantastic sir so this is a photograph from 1991 year after i joined lard clinic where uh, this was in manipal you can see baskaranand kumar and a young dr lard yes uh, at the uh, uh Hello. at the podium and this was a, the the first time i traveled with you to trishur with dr bb joshi to conduct the external fixator workshop uh this is a photograph that ravi sarangpani has uh shared with me you did probably more than 100 workshops all across the country there's not a single city or town in india that you haven't gone where the orthopedic surgeons that you touched during those training periods considered you their guru and throughout life always got back to you sir i can't forget the <clears throat> small guest house in chidambaram i was unhappy there were mosquitoes the fan wouldn't work it was hot and you came out of the bathroom after a bath and you went and sat in front of the uh, dressing table and you said sudhir i haven't been in a better guest house than this and do you know why you said that because you found a small bottle of parachute coconut oil which yes. you used on your hair and i said this man is so simple all he needed was a few drops of coconut oil to convert hell to heaven so you <laughs> carried gunny bags workshop material you traveled in buses and trains you stayed with friends and students of yours i remember you staying in uh, naru's house in narayan's house when you were offered al bustan one of the 10 best hotels in the world you said no i'm going to stay with narayan in his one bedroom house in muskat who did all of this just to teach i have a question sir was it worth it of course it was worth it let me ask you a counter question do you think money power has ever beaten people's power understand money power has limitations people power is unlimited why is it that politician money people rich people run after the high office because they believe people's power is ultimate and my people's power was the educated 1% of the orthopedic fraternity of this country so look by my meeting them i was getting a sec uh, satisfaction of the billionaire so you know it is intense and i tell you the pro, pro, we have all the abilities but most important part we must remember in life is the pleasure to give is far more than pleasure to take so here so i remember. must here here i must interrupt you sir because ah. what you just said you put into practice when we did this uh, this was the first uh sark orthopedic meeting in nepal uh where uh, we had the likes of ranawat and larry dor and seven other top names in the joint replacement world at that time come to nepal and i can't forget the time that they had checked into the wrong hotel and there was a lot of money to be paid to shift them from that hotel to the hotel where we had already paid for the conference was not making any money and you paid that money you invested not only your time you invested a lot of your money in doing all of this you then went on sir on another journey after having made orthopedics very simple for 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 all of us 
using materials that we had, you knew that there was something new that had to come into this country. You went into the AO uh, group. You got the first AO set for your hospital. You did the first basic and advanced course, believing that this is the way forward. And finally, you became an AO trustee. And I have a wonderful letter that Jesse Jupiter has written about you. Diego Fernandez and I express our deepest regards and great respect for all that you have done and continue to do in India and in the AO Foundation. My best personal regards, uh, Jesse Jupiter. This was in Glen Eagles in 1996. You had a wonderful, wonderful time there. Uh, I saw the other side of Dr. Lai. At the end of the day, he would run up and play with his grandchildren. And when the residents would call him down and say, sir, we haven't sorted out tomorrow's list, he would bring his grandchildren down and he would multitask. When he came back home one day, he realized that it was his grandson's birthday and he hadn't got anything for him. So he asked for a big card paper and he actually made a lovely card and I'm sure Nilu enjoyed that as well. Sir, from the, from the times that we sat across and listened to you, the times that you kept on telling us where we went wrong until where we, all of us, came into our own and started teaching or uh, spreading orthopedic information. I have one uh, uh, memory of a time when one of your students actually autoclaved a plastic battery of a power drill. And I thought, you're going to lose it. I thought, you're going to get very, very angry. I was sure that boy was finished, that he's not going to complete his orthopedics. But you didn't get angry, sir. Sir, you chose well. You trusted. And then you empowered. You never micromanaged. You took the blame for all of our failures and the failures of your team. But you never fail to share your successes equally with all of us. So how can I be like you? Uh, Sudhir, that story, what you said is correct. It was a, a drill, you know, first drill to do a joint replacement surgery because Dr. Ranavata donated the joints. And it was a battery-operated drill where you should not have autoclaved the battery also. But uh, I thought that uh, when it came to me, I thought for a moment and I said, is it that boy's fault? And I looked back and I said, it was my fault. I'm bringing a technology to a young resident who is not aware of it. And if I'm bringing it, I should have informed him. And the boy is going to, who he was not going to autoclave. It was the autoclave boy who could have done this. And what I did was I took a battery which used to charge it. It was taken from it and I forgot to tell him. When that happened and when he came to me, I said, all right, what has happened has happened. Because if I was to shout at him, I didn't want to demoralize him. I wanted him to think that I must do using technology. Anything new instrument, I must know what it is. And that boy learned it for his lifetime. So whenever there is a disaster, don't put a blame on anybody else. Look within. Because you have, must have yourself a big effort to show by example that in a disaster situation, don't lose patience. Analyze it. And create from a difficult situation to a solvable situation, which if that boy takes up, he will learn it as a lesson. And by my shouting, the battery would have not come back. So Sir, I remember, I, I remember we were in Perindal Manna many, many, many years ago. And we had a, a big, a, a very long travel. And we reached there, we were very tired. The mountains were beautiful. The weather was perfect. And you said, come, let's go for a walk. And I can't forget that you walked so fast uphill at that age, I must have been 20 years, 25 years younger than you, and I just couldn't keep pace with you. I see you. I stayed in many rooms with you uh, when we used to be offered a single ro uh, 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 a room together, not single rooms. And I know that at 5.30, you wake up and you run and you do 
jogging on the spot you do surya namaskar you do your exercises sir you have been exemplary in putting across the work life balance and it is something that probably we did not learn sir. well i think we are running out of time but the teaching you can see abhay narvekar one of his earlier students is still learning from him but the teaching never ends and the secret to this is because the learning never stops this is dr large's 80th birthday and he was so happy that he was able to print out his patient's uh, case paper on a new software thanks to alex his newest student i'm very very grateful to uh, uh, to saraswati foundation to dipti and uh, to all of the organizers for having asked me to share these few moments with one of the finest finest human beings i know dr hasan thank you sudhir so thank you uh, sudhir warrior and dr Yeah, Dr. Lord, please continue. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you, Sudhir. Uh, I never thought that I was such a big person and all. Anyway, I am really not very convinced what you have said about me, but that's all right. <laughs> I think uh, I am very fortunate. You know, it's not only you have you must have have a good fortune to have good colleagues. And joy as a person, I'll tell you that I always think. that when we talk about human beings it's very important is it important to be very rich yes is it important to be very intelligent yes is very important to be shrewd yeah maybe is it very important to be well connected maybe but it's very vital to be good joy had everything but most important point joy possessed was he was a very good human being excellent human being joy was bright and because he was bright he had an idea of lateral thinking and that has cost him many time in examination because and mind you i was his examiner in one of the cases where he was given a p minus what joy said was right and what external said was not correct and i had an argument and after that it is lunch time i told him this is what these boys said there i learned one thing even we as an examiners have to be open because if you go on the other side and the boy is on this side he would have also not qualified so this was a great quality joy was innovator you know he has innovated five instruments joy was a great company joy and dipti was travel to masker i traveled with him to england we stayed together joy had a very peculiar humor i don't know many of you he used to laugh his heart out and i think unless you're a very good hearted person you cannot laugh loudly now despite of all the problems joy enjoyed his cigarette he enjoyed his drink he enjoyed his surgery he enjoyed his talking and he was a voracious reader he was like a encyclopedia i remember how sharp he was he was traveling in england going to coventry and he told me sir sir i will tell you ultrasound will be the stethoscope of orthopedic surgeons tell me friends how many of us could have even thought of this idea don't to think today ultrasound for musculoskeletal surgery is like a stethoscope only thing is there you have to hear here you have to hear and see so this was this was great thinking and i i can tell you joy would have been a greatest success do you know he was a good architect he was a good planner and he could think and he had a very sharp memory very sharp memory and he could you know extract things out very well but most important part of our joy was he never criticized anybody never he as a person would just not pay attention when anybody was bad 
and you could say that joy probably has not liked that but he will never openly criticize anybody now today i was told when dipti called me and sandeep said that you have uh, to perspire to have inspire i just i don't think joy had to perspire because somebody was inspiring him in km hospital that is dipti he did things in time he was productive in time so if you all remember joy was a very good example for young orthopedic surgeons so remember do things in time no no i will earn money then i'll take my family are baba you may take your family but your wife will not be young joy taught me that he said do things in time enjoy things in time it is most unfortunate he is one of the best talents that uh, we lost him but so far as my memory is with him are everlasting I know I have to stop in five minutes, but some day you arrange a program, and I will tell you the secrets of Deepi and Joy, and it will be very humorous <laughs> program of the Muscat trip, of the England trip, and what dinners we had in Chembur. So these are all excellent memories. I his his children is Joy Xerox, his elder daughter, and his younger daughter also. and i think uh, his son is also very creative the children are also very creative so it i was really glad when dipti phoned me and said that sir so we all stand up today to pay this tribute to the great teacher and today i have no hesitation in accepting joy as my teacher so far as innovation in orthopedic surgery of instrumentation is done about animation in ctv of concept what he devised so i also learn from him i will end by quoting dr ranavat one day people asked dr ranavat when are you going to retire he said the way my the day my assistant operate better than i retire so if you have to quote my experience with joy i should have retired 30 years ago thank you very much dipti and i bless you and your children it was extremely nice and we all today as teachers share this gang memories of our friend philosopher and a guide and i wish all of us have this camaraderie together that's the only way we'll propagate science and knowledge thank you for calling me i am honored i'm very happy thank you so thank you sudhir and dr lord this was these were lessons in humanities more than orthopedic surgery and uh, though you know we have joyce family and his friends on this program on zoom lots of people are still attending this program on ortho tv and uh, comments are pouring in and uh, asim parekh uh, writes that joy was never about personalities he was about people and that's absolutely right what i'm going to do now is uh, A, a, a surprise for dipti you know there are messages for from lot of joyce friends i'm going to play that as a video and let's listen to what people have to say about joy uh, in a तरल आवाज नहीं आ रहा तरल सर तरल देर इज नो ऑडियो अशोक कैन यू प्ले इट फ्रॉम योर यस Tarun sir, should I play? Yes.
Joy was a man of all seasons, a multifaceted personality. He was very unassuming and could handle any orthopedic issue under the sun. Or why any orthopedic issue? For that matter, any issue. Was he only good in orthopedics? Absolutely not. Orthopedics, I feel, was just a small part of Joy's vast knowledge and his desire to learn new things every time. Joy was not only a great teacher, but a fabulous mentor for a whole generation of orthopedic surgeons who passed out of Sion Hospital. He lived by the principle that knowledge is something that needs to be shared. And when you share knowledge, your knowledge grows. Whether it was in our morning teaching sessions at Sion Hospital or the round table in the canteen in the afternoon, Joy was very opinionated, spoke with authority, and everyone around him listened to him and admired him. Joy Patrickar was my formidable senior, a GS topper, and then my best friend Dipti's husband. Joy was a multifaceted personality. He could expound on any topic with great con convincing power for hours together. Joy Baddal Kaay Bolu. Maja Ayushat, Don Atishe Hushar, Je gifted man to naashi, Don man samaj dali, Tatla ek manje Joy. Joy manje ek akshar cha utsha cha ek zhara cha cha kaayam. Joy was an excellent teacher and his oratory skills, as well as his teaching skills, was second to none. A huge vision uh, for his private setup and uh, many surgeons coming together under one roof and practicing uh, the state uh, of the art of the uh, orthopedics in various subspecialties of orthopedics. He was truly good at dreaming big. And he had, uh, marv and I marveled always at his business acumen. Friends, anyone who came into contact with Joy in KEM will remember the enthusiasm and the energy that he imparted to any conversation or discussion. He was big, but his heart was bigger. Joy was a gentle giant with a larger than life personality a very caring soul with an iron fist. There was a lot of operations, there was a lot of information, and there was a lot of information in the night, and there was a lot of information. I remember Joy, his minimum physical movement, his hearty laugh, the smoke curls, and his inability to absolutely tolerate fools. I found he had a passion for teaching, and he found that I had a passion for teaching. And he told me, Anagha, ek karaycha. Shikona sati paise gaycha ni. Dil khula shikwaycha, residents na. In the midst of a class, he would come up with Maharashtrian colloqu colloquialisms, which we used to call joyisms, which would make us roll with laughter. If a resident presenting a case was beating around the bush, Joy would say, Baap da khau ki wa shraddha kar, meaning, Either prove your point or bury the thought and move forwards. His larges literally came through over a table which was laden with a lot of food, drink, sparkling conversation and then some more. And knowledge he did have, not just on the core subject of orthopedics, but on so many different diverse subjects, whether it was international history, whether it was Indian history, whether it was mythology, whether it was sports. Joy was not only a great teacher, a friend, but he was also a great family man. I remember that at least once or twice a week, he would take the morning off and would drive all the way down to Panvel to take his children for horse riding. It's been 15 years since Joy has left this world, but his memories, his teachings will always continue to guide me and all of us.
on this special occasion of Teachers Day, we remember Joy with great pride. Let us pledge today to take forward his legacy and his teachings. Joy, we miss you. Joy, uh, it's been so lovely to meet you as a person and we of course cherish your memories and you'll be missed forever. You will stay in our hearts forever. Joy. I will always be grateful to him for that. He will always have a special place in our memories. And I for one will miss him forever and he'll live in our hearts forever. Joy, I'm sure all of us will have the same sentiment here. We miss you and we could have learned so much more. And Joy, wherever you are, I'm, I know that you are not only looking and blessing Deepti, Malvika, your grandchild, Yash and Nikki who is a doctor now and you are looking at all of us. Joy, wherever you are, we all remember you. We thank you for all that you have done for us and hope that God keeps you blessed forever. Joy left us in one fell swoop, a joy-sized vacuum in our lives. Nilesh and I will always miss you, Joy. It was a pleasure to do you. And I only hope wherever he is, just like his name, he will be spreading joy. And I'm quite sure that is how it would be. Just like he gave us the joy when he was around us. What a lovely person. Yeah, thanks Ashok uh, for playing that. Uh, memories of joy. Uh, some sad and some pleasant memories. Let's move on with the program and uh, I want to invite now the next uh, pair of student and teacher duo, the dynamic DDT and uh, his student uh, Sangeet Gawale. Sangeet uh, was not uh, Dr. Tanna's direct postgraduate student, but he joined him after that in practice. And uh, let's hear from Sangeet. What are the successful clinical tips which he learned from Dr. Tanna. And following this, Dr. Tanna, uh, to reply to what Sangeet said. Sangeet, over to you. If I have to sum up about Joy in a sentence, I would say this. Uh, he was an extraordinary person uh, who was way beyond the time, way ahead of the time. And I'm sure if he would have been alive, he would have been on the highest platform. Uh, I remember one other peculiar thing about him. He used to exhale his smoke in a very peculiar way where he used to rotate his neck and extend. And uh, uh, he used the exhale, the air used to, the smoke used to go in a particular direction. So those are my memories apart from <laughs> our association in the fracture courses, in the external fixator courses that were held regularly in Cyan Hospital. Uh, but uh, destiny was different for him and uh, we remember him on the occasion today. Uh, starting with the talk, uh, today is a teacher's day and Charan Sparsh to all my seniors and teachers who are here and Pranam. Our life uh, is exactly what is seen in this slide life of orthopedic surgeon. It is in Marathi and I'll read it. Paristiti che satke sahan ke lavarats mansa chi kimmat varte. And on the left side, you can see a raw corn, which is about five rupees. And the roasted one, which is roasted in three degrees, it is costlier, it is about 20 rupees. So that is the life of most of us. Nokia, was a telecommunication giant, uh, one of the time, a Finnish company which was established almost 200 years ago. It was acquired by Microscope. Nokia was a very well respected company. They did nothing wrong in the business, but the world changed very quickly. 
and they missed out learning they missed out on the change they missed out an opportunity to become a giant and they lost their chance to survive in this on the right hand side you have the picture the ceo who is crying at the time whenever he, he was handing over the company to microsoft steve bomber and what do we learn from him is exactly what my teacher has taught me three decades back if you if you do not want to learn new things and your thoughts cannot change up with time you will end with the time a person remains successful as long as he learns and if he thinks he has learned he has condemned himself for failure if you do not change you will be disqualified from the competition and this change i have seen in my teacher what he was practicing three decades back my association with him is almost more than three decades so what he was practicing three decades back and what he was practicing two decades back and what he is practicing today is totally different similar are the surgeries which are obsolete similar are his talks where he used to praise a particular surgical procedure procedure and now he criticizes the same during his talks so that is the change which has happened in last 30 years we have three c's in life the choice the chance and the change you must make a choice to take a chance or your life will never change if you have a choice then choose the best if you have no choice then do the best i was lucky enough to have a choice and then choose the best at that time he always says every and my inference during my conversation with him has been every time i interact with him i learn something new and every time i hear his same lectures still i learn something new from him so that is my teacher dr d d tanna coming to the success of clinical practice his analytical mind is exactly similar to this figure which we often see in the tv uh, who's a, a spe cid specialist who always say there is something wrong there is something wrong and his analytical mind in solving a issue which is related to a common day to day problem or a common related situation or a complication or if something has gone wrong is just amazing uh at that time or even now in his clinic he has the largest x ray viewing box and i remember whenever the patient used to come with the x rays for a follow up he used to put all the x rays serially and he used to see them through a magnifying glass and analyzing them and the conclusion were just amazing amazing and that is how we learned lot of things in his clinic from him now this aspect has helped lot of us in everyday to day life i am sure those who are working in municipal hospital government hospital they always face a problem of manpower or something going wrong at 11th hour and it is what requires from our side is just analyzing the problem redistributing the manpower or just giving the duties or switching the duties to somebody else so that you get the result so you you can work on that day it is not that the, he has not come so the work should stop the work should go on second and most important thing is day to day life we often wait for a electrician to fix a small switch if we analyze what is a problem if the screw is loo loose we can just fix it ourselves we don't have to depend on anybody so it is this analysis which is most important and what i have observed from him his planning a day before the surgery of the execution what he is going to do in the theater on the table acquiring and planning about the implants either from one company or two company and always preparedness for a plan b if the plan a doesn't work 
if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but not the goal. I never seen him coming out of the surgery halfway. He, he completes the surgery. That is the peculiarity about him. You must not have seen him in this uh, figure. Knowledge, he always says, can, you can acquire only if you are well-read. It cannot be acquired by seeing somebody else's surgery. You have to read. You have to get acclimatized to the procedure, to the new procedure. And at that time, he had almost access to all the journals, whether it is JBG, whether it is a OCNA, whether it is a clinical orthopedics. He used to read first and then pass on to us for reading. He, at that time, he acquired knowledge, new surgeries by attending almost uh, all the top international conferences where he would observe the topmost, who is who in a particular uh, uh, field and probably he could take uh, back home, practice it and then transfer it to us. His investment were in his fully equipped setup which almost had all the possible implants, all the possible instruments, which were available at any given time. Other aspect about him, what I find very unusual is the way he handles the complication. The normal surgeon would respond by shouting, by throwing the instrument and blaming someone else for what he could not execute properly or he has failed in planning or something has gone wrong. He has a peculiar habit of uh, pausing for some time and then addressing the same problem again. And that I have seen his calmness to solve the issue quietly is just amazing. I've never seen him getting angry when he faces a complication. Success of clinical practice is one more aspect where uh, he is ruthless as regards re-exploration, reopening of a suspected infection, or if something has gone wrong, or if he has his own complication, he does not hesitate to re-explore. Uh, that needs extraordinary courage to explain to your own patient, which I still do not have. This is I mean, just amazing aspect of Dr. Didi Tanna. And he says, more people would learn from their mistake if they weren't so busy denying them. Excellence is not for someone else to notice. It is for your own satisfaction. So what you do during the day or what you have executed in the operation theater during the day gives you a own satisfaction which cannot be compared as regards money or as regards anything else. I never found him criticizing to any of his colleagues or juniors and I still wonder how he keeps excellent relations with almost all the orthopedic surgeons of all the ages, be a student, be a junior or be the senior most. I never seen him uh, so comfortable with most of them. He is always uh, at their level at any given time. He has ignited sparks in so many students who have turned into brilliant orthopedic surgeon. He has taught us to enjoy the surgery and not just complete the surgery. At the end, I should be thrilled. I should get a satisfaction of what I have done is the perfect way to my capabilities. He always tells, once you fly, this sky is yours. So keep on trying, keep on trying. One says, you made my day, but we all say you made our whole life. He always says, if you don't sacrifice for what you want, what you want, becomes your sacrifice and that is in relation to what you want to enjoy in life. Don't wait until retirement to travel because you will not be in a condition to enjoy that age where you cannot do anything. Okay. 
don't travel with the intention that the world should see you travel with the intention to see the world and that is what he loves all the time at least three or four breaks in a year where he enjoys travel this is uh, somewhere in iceland these are the natural geysers which erupt every four minutes or five minutes and if you have to enjoy something you have to be there to believe it how this naturally erupts similar is our surgeon if you are well read if you are well planned probably and if you execute that well the thrill is exactly similar to this his other passion is teaching and all of you will agree whichever hall he is present wherever he is delivering the halls are always packed that is his passion towards teaching he never forgets to make a apology if he has uh, raised his voice by mistake and there are three things when a good apology you make you can say i am sorry it's my fault or what can i do to make it right next time that is what he analyzes always he has a beautiful family where he enjoys vacation with so many students all over india and i am blessed i am blessed to have him as my role model and a teacher i'll never forget the hands which have raised me i always wish he should keep on smiling more smile and as he is aging all i wish is he should become younger younger and if he would not have been a orthopedic surgeon he would have been still my hero as a hollywood actor somewhere in the world thank you so much thank you sangeet uh, dr didi tanna over to you uh, to reply to what sandeep has said please unmute yourself that was brilliant sangeet i think it is only your students who make you feel that you have done something in the life <laughs> uh, you never realize when you doing things uh, sangeet thank you for making me realize things what i have done and that beer which i never had it ever in my life i didn't know how you got them i'm sorry for that i have not <laughs> don't worry don't worry i take the liberty okay. yeah, i think it was that it was great talking to sangeet all throughout my life i think he has been one of my ardent uh, friend today anything which is there i think still today i feel he is one of the best person whom i can talk to and i can really relate to sangeet you have been one of my great admirer i know but you don't know that i am also one of your great admirer thank you sangeet very much joy we never been together in the same college he was in km i was in nair but probably i might have come in contact with him as a postgraduate i don't recollect but i only recollect being with him as a faculty somewhere in india all over in india and it was a wonderful thing time to have it with him in the auditorium where he you he would teach me lots of things i have learned from him and after the after the day is over in the evenings he has been a wonderful student of uh, people he would really admire the way he talks about the way he talks about people i really enjoy it and it just look we had been working together and we had very very pleasant times together in just look i hope wherever he is he is happy and he is enjoying his time thank you very much friends thank you very much thank you sir for finding time to come for the meeting yeah i and, enjoy, uh, I've enjoyed being here i never heard so much of appreciation of mine ever in life <laughs> <laughs> now i think everybody on this platform is privileged to be around and have learned from people like you dr lard dr inger ikar gs kulkarni sir sanchiti sir and so many stalwarts it's a great time to be alive and uh, we would have loved if uh, joy was around and we have two great stalwarts coming up now who are even more brilliant and going to the next level 
and let me invite abhay nene to talk about his mentor and what he learned from dr bhojraj on going to the next level philanthropy uh, a different dimension for, especially from spine surgeons now that is something that people would think let's take a pinch of salt with it philanthropy and spine how does it go hand in hand uh, dr bhojraj has been uh, uh, it has informed us that he is not available today for uh, this meeting and dr vti will uh, stand in for him if comments need to be made and taral is also in the same loop because he does a lot of philanthropy over to you abhay thank you so much it's been uh, sandeep and taral it's been a surreal one hour uh to have been in the company of the superman of orthopedics these are the guys who you know we we would not even you know dream to be near and you know now on the same stage and the amount of iq on this zoom platform you know can weigh down in any one you know any any other place in the world and it's been a lovely get together and we are all talking about this one rockstar who still lives on and um, i can tell you this that uh, you know those two hours i've shared with him on the flight where i it was like gyan for me um you know i got to know so much about a guy who and the entire thought process in his head and i see the same reflection in dear dipti whenever i meet her so he has left his big legacy behind and uh, he's here with us and i'm very happy joy uh, nice to see you again and uh, thank you for making this possible for us because uh, it could have never been possible it's only you who can get so many people together i'm going to dive in straight into a topic which um, you know my superman uh, uh, you know explored and uh, the unfortunate truth is that india is the biggest supplier of human beings to the to the world and our population explosion has become so big that um, it just does not match with the fact that uh, back pain can be handled in this kind of a setting because back pain is indeed one of the top 3 uh, reasons for a doctor consult worldwide and um, it's no longer an urban disease so when uh, uh, you know tongue tongue in cheek remark comes in that uh, you know you uh, spine surgeons are urban you know urban um, uh, you dwell off uh, urban money it's really not true because uh, the rural india also suffers from back pain and we found that in our study uh, uh, in gadchiroli which is a central tribal district of india and we found that more than 70% of people who did labor uh, labor jobs actually uh, had back problems now here's the startling fact that india is short of uh, 5 lakh doctors and our doctor patient ratio is one of the worst in the world and uh, despite us having uh, you know tall buildings on one end and you know richness on one end we do live in a lot of urban poverty also uh, the problem is that everything cascades onto healthcare and in india though you know some people can live a very very lavish lifestyle i know sandeep himself drives a very fancy car and his cycle costs him uh, a lakh and a half uh, this guy can't even afford a chashma on his face and uh, if you can see why that the healthcare is largely gravitated towards the private uh, you know private sector and uh, the, the public healthcare is um, uh, you know to put it kindly substandard and short of resources and most people are spending out of pocket to get to better resources uh, there is a huge unmet need because uh, though primary healthcare is free it's really not accessible to the man on the you know in the villages because uh, 70% of india lives in villages and 70% of indian doctors are in cities uh, specialized uh, tertiary care is not available where it should be and um, i mean this sums up our problem that we are offering cutting edge technology in bombay city but um, the largest chunk of our population cannot even reach out to it and uh, this becomes a big problem because uh, as far as the back is concerned it's such a huge industry that a lot of advances are being made for less and less problems so we are doing more and more for less and less uh, which has no relevance to the majority of the population uh, the real india uh, has to carry this girl on her back and you know walk for 500 kilometers to get to some sensible uh, access to treatment so how to tip this uh, seemingly impossible balance how do you take care of uh, you know spinal problems for the navy and this guy my superman dr bhojraj he started he thought about this there was no reason for anyone to think about this because we are all living in a cushy lifestyle pretty busy in our work and uh, we think of ourselves as 360 degree doctors playing music you know running and doing sports why should i really bother about you know someone who doesn't even know who i am or doesn't even you know know, know that there is uh, spine uh, facilities available so it has to come from the heart and uh, i think um, uh, taral would agree more than anyone else because taral does a lot of work in the, the deep recesses of india that the guys in the villages need us to reach out to them and we don't we don't need to wait for them to reach out to us so dr bhojraj thought of this 
and he created a, a big team which is now grown into multiples of what you see and uh, that is the spine foundation from uh, 1998 till now um, what we did or what dr bhujraj did was dive deep dive into the recesses of india where spine care was not available so literally these guys and these guys are not only the have nots they don't have food so they don't even have time to look after their back problems but really uh, uh, when we did the study in gadchiroli we found that a lot of uh, uh, like a, the largest reason why people young adults were being out of work uh, was because of their back problems so uh, how what we really wanted to do was to initiate spine surgery in setups in areas where affordable and rationalized spine care was not available it was not an easy job so uh, because we had to raise money we had to you know uh, create uh, you know create um, uh, theaters create uh, healthcare systems in places where you know huts and uh, spiders and uh, snakes actually uh, crawled so um, uh, the the way we started was to uh, was the robin hood concept so we had uh, happy patients happy donors and that's where i want to i want to say this again that um, the indian the human or the indian man or woman has a large heart and they just need a place to donate uh, money as long as the place is legit and because the amount of donations that we've had is overwhelming because they know it's going to the right cause and uh, it's through these donations that we've been able to build spine facilities in uh, uh, you know in uh, across the across the country in all zones and uh, the way we do it is that we have a team which uh, is broken all all are busy practicing spine surgeons who come from the same lineage and uh, everyone's in different parts of the country and everyone is assigned a job and uh, uh, you know they go about sub sub specializing into their job of philanthropy so it's a decentralized uh, uh, you know unit that works even without or when dr bhujraj is not available like now uh, being a karma yogi he's away in one of his camps but uh, work is still going on so the way we do it is we start with evaluation camps look for the need is there a need in a particular area Uh, is there availability of resources is there availability of a local spark who can you know take the fire and uh, you know move it forward uh, and then we have to go through the systems and try to um, uh, make this facility as basic as possible so the uh, you know the wrong guys don't get access to it because that's also been a problem that uh, there are some you know uh, affluent people living in that area who would then come and crowd your facility Uh, this is what we've been able to cover so far. The blue ones are the ones that are up and running: Gadchiroli, Ambe Sogai, Akola, Dhulia, Ratnagiri, Sitilingi, Aurangabad, Arohi, and uh, Dehradun, which is in the hills on, on in the north. And uh, the others are still in the process, and some of them are uh, you know partly up and running. We have three levels of uh, services. One is the NGOs, uh, where uh, you know we do mainly screening. Uh, so these NGOs actually we drive our trucks into the deep tribal villages, and uh, you know. Uh, we look for people who have back problems because they don't even know uh, what they have uh, then we tie up with the local uh, civil hospitals and uh, uh, that then gets notched up to the bigger government hospitals where uh, uh, being a government hospital the system is very legit and there is transparency and there is no you know room for a quid pro quo if you may uh, we've had mous with the government uh, and with certain ngos who have been very very proactive Uh, we've covered a large part of uh, our state but we've of course gone beyond this for example ambejogai which is the first medical college in maharashtra or in india they say uh, no spine surgery had been done till date and uh, uh, dr bhujraj wende lies with the dean and um, you know by the end of uh, the first uh, three camps we had seen 65 specialty back patients and uh, at the end of it uh, you know performed over a dozen surgeries in our first surgical camp so we go with our team our equipment our implants and uh, all all we need is a legit facility locally and uh, maybe residents who are interested so this then spills over to uh, you know uh, teaching also so when once we go through every college then it moves on to teaching we learn ourselves to you know deal with very very basic facilities uh, you know x rays being dried on trees and uh, some places we have accesses to mri scans we've done spine surgeries without x rays and crms uh we've done it on wooden tables but uh, it's no heroism it is uh, when you look at uh, the people around you they power you up and you're able to do these kind of things um uh, we we've, we've gone down to kokan and now we moved into uh, 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 tamil nadu in uh, uh, in sitilingi uh, ratnagiri civil hospital was one of the places where uh, dr milin patwardhan who was uh, one of my seniors actually uh, has taken up the metal of uh, working there so a local person from our team would then head that area and uh, we would just provide the resources 
uh then uh, this would then uh, move into teaching sessions which would empower the local surgeons into academics we do uh, basic spine surgery training camps there and then uh, of course they learn the art of surgery also uh, looking forward uh, there are many more centers that uh, you know which are the catchment areas which we are looking at and uh, the team is up and running uh, we did some uh, exclusive surgeries that were never done in uh, areas that uh, you know that never had seen these kind of surgeries um we moved into the pahadi areas it's a challenge in itself because the weather is very very uh, unrelenting and to you know get a surgery done in that uh, environment can be very challenging and uh, in the lockdown again you know um, uh, uh, the quotient of uh, uh, you know the, the service quotient rose up because we could then move to a, a web based diagnosis and uh, screening camps and we could then eventually provide care uh you know on zoom uh, or on a platform like this and then just go there for surgery so that is actually in a way eased up uh, you know the way we function and we hope to have this uh, rural spinal center model uh, up and running all over the country the assi the associate spine surgeon of india is helping us the ioa is helping us and all of you great folks are uh, you know a part of this so do join us come along today tomorrow whenever you're ready because uh, this is an endless proposition and uh, i just uh, spoke to you about uh, the spine foundation but uh, there is a pediatric orthopedic foundation there is the hand foundation everyone is doing their job and um, uh, you know we need more and more superheroes amongst us to emulate uh, and we can you know make uh, india a far more um, you know well looked after well serviced uh, health industry thank you so much and we missing dr bhojral because he's on his karma yogic mission but uh, he's very much uh, you know his blessings are with us thank you thank you thank you abhay thank you for that brilliant overview of the kind mm -hmm. of philanthropic work that is being going on and it's absolutely sandeep. a role model uh, sandeep i yes. i must thank you right now for asking abhay to give this presentation i think it's a mammoth work it's a phenomenal work and this had to go out to the people uh, i i don't think we have such similar models anywhere in the world for that matter uh, maybe they are covered by official agencies but self made or self raised organizations like this uh, i think only india can do it and a person like shikhar bhojwal can do it and he is truly a karma yogi hmm. so, so i thank you once again for not dropping a by stock absolutely sir so i think it's important that we have role models there's a there's a next generation looking up to what uh, we would be teaching to them on teachers day and we have uh, more than one philanthropist here taral does a lot of work in bhuj taral i want your inputs on how you have been managing on uh, the pediatric orthopedic philanthropic work that you've been doing so far and it's it's a great uh, mentorship uh, lesson and uh, abhay thanks for putting the modus operandi up so that a lot more people may get inspired because altruism is part of human psyche and that is the mm -hmm. next level of nirvana that probably most of us would like to achieve so sandeep uh, i was the illegitimate student of joy and the reason was that i was at uh, km and sandeep was at sayan and sandeep used to great crash me into joy's clinic early in the morning and he was absolutely mesmerizing to an extent that uh, we wanted to live his life and we we are living his life you know he wanted to teach and we have done through ifix and he used to talk about philanthropy about rotary club about outreach camps rujuta if you are listening to this the word outreach is not my word i got it from joy patankar and uh, uh, dipti we just want to tell you that whatever joy stood for whatever he lived for what were his dreams his uncomplete dreams we are here to 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 live those dreams and complete sandeep does a lot of uh, philanthropy work with phenolex foundation in satara and other areas <clears throat> uh, i am trying to do whatever i learned from him uh, and, and uh, apply joy model of philanthropy to kach and other areas uh, sandeep i feel that one of the things with joy always spoke about you know outside joy hospital while having a cup of tea in one hand and a, a cigarette in other other hand he used to say that polio is a national program and yeah. his dream was to make cerebral palsy as a national program 
you know since dr johri is here rujuta is here you know um, i am here sandeep is here i think we should live up his dream and get the care of cerebral palsy into national program national health Absolutely. program of india and if it can do that the 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 care for cp will actually be available to each and every child uh, you know in remote part of this country so those yeah. were my few bits on to on to philanthropy let's move on to uh, move Absolutely. on with the rest of the program so yeah yeah so uh, we'll have john clegg's inputs in the end john has come with joy to uttar pradesh madhya pradesh and has done surgery with us is here with us uh, today from uh, on the program from coventry so uh, let's uh, give him time in the end after rujuta's talk dr johari is here with us and i would welcome him uh, for this meeting and let me hand over to rujuta to talk to us about what she learned from her teacher multitasking and thinking big so i must admit uh, right at the outset that i am extremely nervous right now because uh, it is so difficult to sum up a man as as big as dr johari in uh, 115 minute talk i really try to do my best and i would like to dedicate this to my first teachers dr cg pradhan who taught me really how to live in this big big world and which i come to love now over a period of time dr tarapur wala and dr kati dolakia who really ingrained the few uh, things that i kind of uh, do well in orthopedics and i want to thank the people to thank joy for uh, really making such a worthy contribution to ioa as well because i think in pe- pediatric orthopedics never was in the forefront of uh, any of the ioa meetings Still, they really contributed to it and said that the Joy Patankar Gold Medal will be dedicated to the best paper in pediatric orthopedics. So, thank you, Joy. I think uh, it's not the years in uh, the life uh, that really matter; it's the life in those years that really makes a big difference. Thank you for making a difference for us. What best have I learned from Dr. Ashok Johari? Well, I've chosen two qualities: multitasking and to think big. I really had a my why me today moment when we I uh, was crafting this uh, lecture today because I'm not really his direct student but there are so many others who have really spent one and a half two and a half probably three years with him as fellows but I think I realized that probably I've imbibed such a lot from what I have seen of Dr. Johari over the years so I think the best thing that sir you have taught me is the art of teaching is the art of assisting discovery. and let me try and see how much you help me discover about you about the world about what makes excellence pehchan kon are baba pehchan kon pehchan pehchan the determination the focus in those eyes pehchan the astute observation of this boy scout pehchan is exactly what you gave to the pediatric orthopedic world on the national front and on the international front as well so thank you very much sir he is the wizard of pediatric orthopedics the ever smiling gentle giant with his lovely family over here and i really cannot thank you enough for me today this for you is the audio av- uh, available Yes, Tuluju, we can hear you. Yeah. Let me move music. No, there is no music, man. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I should have sent the video to you, but uh, maybe if there's time at the end, we'll have I'll send it to Ashok. Sure. so multitasking as i would really call him if you really look here and uh, why do we call him this because he is really the shehensha of orthopedics not because he works in andheri ratho mein sunsan gaon par when everything else is he works in the wee hours of the night but because he is really like a true maestro who has to run a very complicated orchestra of his multiple commitments and if you observe a true maestro always has his back turned to the audience because he must look into each and every aspect 
and in each and every aspect with detail. And why is it that he's a multitask king? Because I think over the years, what I have seen him is that if he wants to find time for something, he always can. And he manages it in such a beautiful way that the quality of what he's doing then doesn't suffer while he's already thinking about what he's going to do next. And to think big. And this, I think, multitasking and think big goes hand in hand because only if you think big can you take on more, can you do more, and can you achieve more. So let's see what academic lessons, what career lessons, and what life lessons I think I've learned and I'm still learning from Dr. Jari and probably haven't learned them all together, but I'll still make an attempt. Sir has an absolutely exhaustive list of, a list of accolades, something which a pediatric surgeon orthopedic surgeon would only off. And I mean, they are all listed here. I've probably not really been able to cover everything here. But I think every conceivable uh, achievement in pediatric orthopedics and not just pediatric orthopedics, in many other ways, by being uh, the CICOT current president, he's only the third Indian who is the CICOT president in quick succession after Dr. Ratsikaran. In the Asia Pacific world, in the, uh, I mean, a lot of things, I think he has such a influence over the entire world in terms of what international excellence is, that this is really just one of the you know, smallest lists of achievements that I think uh, Dr. Johari has achieved, and we all should aim and aspire to do the same. To me, he's always been an unbelievable man, a superlative genius and a maverick extraordinaire. Something like this, because I think you redefined everything, and you really brought about a paradigm shift in what the people perceived pediatric orthopedics to be. In fact, this branch was not really known in the orthopedic world at all till really Dr. Dr. Johari came and made a mark. And he not only made a mark for himself, he made a mark for all of us and a beautiful example to emulate. You've redefined success. You've redefined academics. You've redefined what pioneering means. You've redefined how associations at a national level should be created, at an international level should be created, and how they should function and how to keep them sustainable, really. You've really redefined practically every conceivable excellence that I really love of pediatric orthopedics. And I happily concede that, yes, you may want to call me Scully today, but I'm just really put in a lighter way and at the same time, really give my tribute to you the way I think you are. There are only two jokes about Dr. Jori, and we keep receiving requests time and again is that please give Dr. Jori's cell phone number. In fact, there are people who think we are cheating them and denying them when we say Dr. Jori does not have a cell phone. And it's like they just cannot believe that that can happen. And the other thing they cannot believe is time management. Well, just like Rajni Khan, sir doesn't have to manage time. Time has to find a way of managing how to reach his multifarious commitments and achievements. They say they really don't make them like Dr. Johari anymore. And why is that? I think a few top qualities, if I had to choose, what makes ANJ or the mystique of ANJ what he is, is that he has absolute clarity of thought and sharp focus. He's able to prioritize correctly. He has a tremendous drive and desire even to this date, and which is coupled with extreme intelligence. Plus, he does his any task that he takes up. He takes it complete involvement and at the same attachment. And you know, this is where I think it makes all the difference and that is what makes a normal achiever an absolute super achiever. And with that is finesse of technique and therefore he, his work has spoken for him, him over the years and I think that is why he's a multitasking. Now also when you say multitasking, all, all the stalwarts have had so much on their plate. Um, what I saw at close quarters with Sir is that when he's really overburdened, he really knows the difference between what is smart work and what is hard work. So if you can prioritize how much attention to give, respect, and at the same time, he never forgets to follow through. So that is what I call smart work because he knows that there's far too many a slip between the cup and the lip. But he will not do it by pushing. He will do it in a very gentle way but in a timely fashion so that ultimately the main work definitely gets done and the rest always follows. So I think that's something I learned just uh, serendipitously with you.
The other thing I think Sir really emphasizes is that there's absolutely no substitute for hard work. And he has a very, very rigorous work ethic. His only competition is self. And he has tremendous determination to, in fact, take on challenges. I think qualities of all these great leaders are very similar. Uh, with in-depth knowledge comes a lot of constant analysis and learning. And when you do learning with understanding, you are able to really achieve and solve even the most complex puzzles. And another very essential ingredient about taking on challenges is, so still to this date has a childlike fascination about difficult cases. In fact, I've seen him at times really get a high when he's tackling the most difficult, uh, you know, uh, hips which have gone out two, two times operated by other surgeons or a hundred or 120 degree uh, scoliosis curve. He, he just has a fascination about it and does not give up easily. At the same time, when you are dealing with a reconstructive branch like pediatric orthopedics, I think there has to be a lot of acceptance as to what you can change and what intervention to choose and what when not to choose. And this ability of SERS is probably unparalleled uh, to this date in the entire pediatric orthopedic world. And that's why whenever we look at or we are stuck somewhere, we really turn to him for advice. A lot of us do. And he will respond to each one of us with complete attention and complete detail. And yes, of course, there is always a God's gift. There is a natural talent to perform complex cases with ease. Uh, one of his uh, pediatric uh, uh, therapy colleagues has said that Sir's fingers are like an artist's fingers. So uh, therefore, we very easily see how he does them. But I'm sure he rehearses the steps in his mind. He does it with harmony. Therefore, whatever he does, tissue respect, the dissection, and the final result is absolutely par excellence. There are some things I still haven't learned fully from you, I admit today, and uh, which is the ability to put practical things very carefully and firmly. If he gets up in a general body, it will not be without reason. He will not get up at everything. He'll really wait. And when something is really going out of hand, it's like as if he you have a huge hand which comes and really rescues you out of the deep waters. That's what he is in the way I've seen him dealing in uh, associations where things are going out of hand. And he's been a market leader. He's been an influencer, what we say in today's terms. But yet he has the ability to stay grounded and to be very, very connected with a lot of people, be it the smallest uh, implant manufacturer who comes or be it the uh, people from the event management team or from uh, one of his patients. He, I think he really connects very, very well to a really large number of people. And in the face of adversity, uh, especially I say this uh, when I've faced a lot of adversities in personal life and a huge, huge thank you to that. Even one email from him when he learns about it, he always reaches out and says, if you need to talk, I'm there. And then he will guide you through the whole thing in such a, such a calm manner that you actually derive strength from his persona. Sir also has the ability to recognize the right person for the right job. And this is what makes the multi-thinking. And that is why he's able to get him to perform superlatively. I will, I mean, connect maximum with the most recent experience or the journey of POSI 2019. And despite being so well achieved, he is a great sport. And I think probably we can blame his congenital insomnia to that. Hours and hours of uh, uh, giving good lectures or being through a uh, rigorous conference, he's still up to his most spirited self in the night. And uh, look at the, even the dress he goes to wear in, uh, when I asked him to be everyone to be in the uh, attire of the character of their choice, he chose to dress up like Bhupen Hazarika, a music maestro. And I think very few people know that Dr. Johari sings beautifully. If you listen to Hemant Kumar, you're listening to Ashok Johari. If you listen to Ashok Johari, you're listening to Hemant Kumar. That's how beautiful his voice is. And he also plays the sitar, but I don't think too many people know it. And I'm still deprived of that, sir. So you owe it to me. Someday you must play the sitar for me. And despite what he's been doing, fellowships, which usually go on to 2 or 3, next day morning, he will be up and about and taking notes while the best paper uh, award is going on and seeing what new thing he has imbibed from there. And he'll be giving the most lucid lecture despite having prepared it on the flight to the place. So, sir is just amazing. Thinking big, I think that's another important attribute of Dr. Johari. Uh, he really 
kind of has pushed this quality into probably all of us, few of us, well, first generation of children, sort of, uh, to say in pediatric orthopedics that Dr. Johari has, uh, really learned to think big just really by following his example. And that's very special to me. Sir, there's some other things I think which really define you and uh, probably make you still keep going. That is that I think you're still you know good at, there's a book called Staying Hungry, Staying Dissatisfied. And Anne Rand wrote about the virtue of selfishness. Uh, so it's in a good sense that you know you will do limitless effort only when it gives you self-satisfaction. And I think that's something which is truly worthy emulating from you. And none of us can really measure up to you in that. Uh, Sir has great amount of tissue respect and he can see things through the mind's eye as to what will happen if he takes a particular decision during surgery, which is very important in pediatric orthopedics because anything you do now can impact the growth of this child. Along with that, some other qualities I would really like to talk about. Uh, he really respects his patients because he gives them a very patient hearing and even his colleagues. No matter how the problem is, no matter uh, how difficult or how complicated the case may have come, especially if it he deals with such a lot of second, third opinions probably from across the country and across the world, that if the distraught parents are asking some question, he will never criticize the colleague. He will never criticize them and he will actually bring out the best what had happened then and he will patiently explain to the parents as to why you think that you know biology plays a role and things may have been at this stage. But then he learns, he kind of, he's dropped it at that and then immediately he will give them the solution and take it further. So that's a very, very important quality. I think all of us need to learn from him, never criticize your colleagues. And of course, this is a natural ability. He relates to children with a completely disarming spine, smile and a protective demeanor. And no wonder he's so successful in pediatric orthopedics. I'll make a particular mention of his vision because I think OZ or the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of India is the founder member and it was actually his vision and he continues to nurture it with an infinite vision because I think Sir believes that it's not enough just to start something. It is very important to sustain. It is very important to and watch over like a loving parent. And coupled with this, in the journey of Posey, especially, he has had a lot of presence of mind. He's very, very calm and balanced in his thinking of what to do next as an association, what we should do together as an organization. And he will always project the larger good. And trust me, if there is something you think should be happening or should be coming up in the next uh, uh, few years, he'll already have thought about it and he's probably already have read about it. And these two events really changed my life and changed a lot of perceptions in my mind one was the POSI 2000, the millennial conference where I really got to know Dr. Jari at close quarters and the Silver Jubilee conference. So these were the sentinel events in my life which changed the course of pediatric orthopedics in India, changed the course of the way all of us learned pediatric orthopedics and changed the course of the way we teach also pediatric orthopedics now. Because the program that was crafted, I think very few people can really get this balance of a great program which was meant for the general orthopedic surgeons as well as the pediatric orthopedic surgeons. And everybody came to it and left from these modules satisfied. And that's a very, very tough thing to achieve. And it was only because of his international liaisons that the kind of support we had for the Silver Jubilee Conference. I really hope we were able to do some justice in uh, what uh, we learned from you as novices during POSI 2000 and what we brought out during uh, the Silver Jubilee. And I, I hope, sir, that we have one more chance to do the Golden Jubilee together. And that was the kind of in international liaisons, the Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam that he has really created the international Edna. Not a single M is uh, kind of not a star in his own country and in the international front. And each and every one of them just performed brilliantly, just completely came out of a hat with one email from Dr. Jury. Sir's orations, Sir's uh, original first contributions, I think we could go on, but I will leave something for his other students to also say. But I will that I think conceptualization wise and visualization wise, Sir is really several notches about the rest of us. And that was 
his brilliance. I think Taral will remember this anecdote of how this book of from incipience to omnipotence, the journey of Posey was created within three nights and like with his elephantine memory, so would relate year after year uh, incidents and where which conference had taken place, what were the events in Posey all through and we crafted this book. Uh, I think Swapnil and uh, Taral worked very, very hard on it. Oh, I think not just pediatric orthopedics, sir has nurtured a lot of other multidisciplinary programs and that bonding and fostering the growth of those organizations like the therapists, the podiatrists, probably the um, PNO people, everybody looks up, up to him. And that's another huge contribution that Sir has had. Sir has been the first to take on new frontiers, whether it's the Magnex, whether it is the, uh, you know, Vectors. I mean, I can name such a lot of things in pediatric orthopedics. If anybody did it for the first time in India, it was him. And that is why he has a voluminous experience. And these are just some glimpses from all the therapy friends and patients. So I think I will quote Amir Khan here saying that Kamyab hone ke liye pehle kabil banu. Kamyabi jab har ke piche aati hai. And really, Kamyabi chases this man. He doesn't need to make an effort to be Kamyab. And all of us need to uh, really even try 10 times harder to even become anything like him. Sir also has a philanthropic side, which very few people know. And out of this philanthropy have been born such beautiful gifts in Posey in terms of the rural fellowship and some other uh, uh, fellowships and education funds. And we deeply thank you for that, sir. And it's a different sort of an outreach which he created by creating a legacy and lineage of probably two or three generations of pediatric orthopedics who now are in different parts of the country and all catering to the way or the culture of pediatric orthopedics that sir has been teaching. Um, if the woman is speaking so much, can the boys be far behind? I'll take a little voice break and let his boys talk now. Ma'am, you haven't shared the audio. The audio is not working. Oh, can, oh, you, oh, can you stop sharing and start share again and on the audio with it? Uh, you want me to stop share the entire slide? Yes. Okay. Ujita, when you click on the share okay, so button, I'll, there will be an option. Share sound and optimize for the yes, yes. Yes. Click that. Right? Click that. So... I'll go to that slide and Dr. Jory has been just lucky to have him as a teacher, a mentor. There are thousands of qualities that I can think of to enumerate, which would fill pages and pages and take enough amount of time. But Ruchita has tied me down by saying that I should mention only one of the things that has really impressed me about Dr. Jory. And for me, that would be his absolute meticulousness in whatever he does. Not only in his pre-op planning, in his decision making, uh, in his surgical skills while operating, but meticulousness and attention to detail in almost everything that he takes up in life. And that has really influenced me uh, to see the kind of perfectionism that he takes up any project, to see that you can give your best once you have made a decision to take something up. So this is something that I've really learned a lot from Dr. Johari. Thank you very much, sir, for all that you've done for us and happy Teacher's Day. And a guide among lots of details Teachers like Dr. Ashok Jauhri are really not just lucky to have him as a teacher, a mentor, and a guide. Among lots of qualities of Dr. Ashok Jauhri which have inspired me, impressed me, I'm going to share three with you. The first one is unlimited patients, whether it's scoliosis surgery at Bombay Hospital, past midnight or seeing a patient at 2 a.m. at his other clinic, unlimited patients. Second is undivided attention. He is a man of future, but he lived in presence hundred percent. A man of present. And lastly, untiring quest for details. He did it himself and expected it from his students. So we wish you the best in life. 
Thank you very much. Dr. Johari has been a true inspiration and a mentor to many of us. The five qualities that really describe Sir can be summed up in five Ps. His passion for pediatric orthopedics, his perseverance, his perception of the subject, persistence and perfection in execution. And if fellows and residents can learn a few of these qualities, it will make the life and career. Otherwise, it will end up in perspiration. I wish Dr. Johari the best and may he continue to inspire and guide us. And there's a special message from Tushar. He says that I think the best thing about Sir is that he's constantly evolving and visualizing while he's operating. And he has such astute observation that if an opinion is being asked about a certain case, then after everybody has contributed, he will always bring out what someone else has not noticed. So thank you, sir, for accepting me. When I was a second MBA student, uh, only one man actually told me that nothing like that. Of course, girls can take up orthopedics. And I don't know what the world expects when the a woman takes up orthopedics. But you told me that it's all about combat skills. It's all about brawn versus brain. And you're a man of few words, but I am a, a woman of many, many words. But probably I learned a no-nonsense attitude from the kind of excellent standards that you derive and also realized uh, my potential to take on just about anything because you gave me wings to fly and said nothing is impossible. I uh, thank you for inspiring me to go ahead and do academics research and try and present everywhere. And I hope all the lessons that I've learned from you are definitely coming in handy as I run the Wadia department and in my next journey forward, where I'll be carrying the voice of India now. Thank you very much, sir, for helping me see, seeing what others didn't see and for helping me to walk with my favorite slippers or, and sometimes even without slippers. Thank you very much, sir. I have been your Eklavya student, but you've been a Dronacharya who never asked for my thumb. I came curious and I stay inspired, I will not leave, and none of us will leave. Thank you very much, sir. Well, uh, thank you, Rujuta. I, I mean, I don't know what to say, you know, my brain probably has an effusion of adjectives, you know, which I never expected. You, know. It's largely that people um, sort of, uh, let's say, take you on the reality value. Many criticize you on your back. Some say good things about you in the front, you know. So I've learned to take all this with a lot of equanimity. You know. I mean, praise doesn't bother me too much. Neither does uh, criticism bother me too much. I'm in my own uh, world, so to say. I mean, I'm in the present. I, I do what I like to do, what I wish to do. Of course, it's always uh, sort of with a thought for humanity, <clears throat> thought for what is good, what is ethical, and what will benefit the largest segment of the population. You know. I don't say really that uh, I am that sort of a perfectionist, which you have made out to be. But yes, I always try to do my best, and there's always a learning curve. I have learned from all my patients over the years. You know, So much has been learned, uh, but I'm sad to say that even today I make mistakes, you know, and I regret... Uh, what I sometimes do on the surgery table, in spite of good thought, in spite of good sort of details, attention to details and everything, the outcome somehow sometimes is not what we expect, you know. That really sort of sets me back. But otherwise, like, uh, I have found a profession, which is my passion. Hard work doesn't mean much to me, because it's, it's a passion, you know. I came to pediatric orthopedics because I was passionate about kids. Uh, those early years, really, when I went around and talked to people, they said, you know, it's not a viable profession, you know. How, how can you even think of doing it, you know? You need to do something more than pediatric orthopedics. You need to probably do some adult orthopedics or do some arthroplasties or whatever, you know. I mean, I, I thought, no, India has so many children and they all need good pediatric care. Why, why is it not a viable profession? You know, it's got to be viable because there are so many children 
and definitely they all have problems there are congenital problems there are problems of infection trauma so on so forth you know so children are going to need specialist surgeons you know who can look after them and that was the one thought on which i probably made this uh, sort of specialization in my own career and uh, then set about uh, promoting that specialization not by really marketing it i mean i never really went out to market anything you know i never told people what i am doing you know but i mean people came to know about it because i was a local boy here in bombay they knew of my interest in pediatric orthopedics we developed a pediatric orthopedic clinic we were doing good pediatric work in the medical colleges and for that reason people knew you know and they had that faith and trust and when i started i really never had to look back you know at this juncture you know i i cannot but pay a tribute to joy joy as i remember him you know and i'm remembering so many things because of what you have brought out you know as i remember joy you know he came to us uh, in the late 80s you know at wadia children's he was at km and in those days uh, km uh, post graduates were posted to wadia children's hospital so they worked as uh, housemen and i had a lot of brilliant people working with me at um, wadia children's and wadia had that atmosphere uh, where we had patients where we had love affection for everyone where we had brilliance where we had good surgical skills where we had an administration who sort of propelled us uh, who supported us and said yeah go ahead do whatever you wish to do you want to develop the specialty go ahead and do it you know and um, in that sort of an environment i think people flourished and so many who came to wadia became pediatric orthopedic surgeons alaric for example joy for example there are so many abroad you know mon beltour and so many others you know who came taral used to visit regularly and uh, he is an example of a pediatric orthopedic surgeon who has made a name for himself so joy came that way you know and my first impression of him is burly big tall guy you know and um, very confident about himself you know so my first sort of impression about joy was that yes he is supremely confident about what he is talking and what he is doing you know he was interested in pediatric orthopedics he worked 6 uh, months at wadia children's you know in the meantime i had left my sian hospital job you know before uh, i mean i was connected as a honorary at wadia and before that at sian hospital so i had left the sian hospital job and uh, we had started a pediatric orthopedic clinic in sian hospital end of 1985 and that pediatric orthopedic clinic ran very well beautifully well i mean there was a need the physios realized that you know here is somebody who can do justice to pediatric cases and we need to refer those cases to him you know and that's why we had this pediatric orthopedic clinic which was flourishing i was very happy when joy finished and uh, joy became a lecturer at uh, sian hospital and he took on my job you know he took on the pediatric orthopedic clinic and ran it very very well you know joy did very well as the pediatric orthopedic surgeon we interacted not so frequently as i would have wanted to but whenever we met we did chat with each other you know it was very sad um, sometime in 2006 to know about um, you know joy's passing over to the next world and um, he's gone came like a flower flowered actually flowered is the sense of the term he flowered uh, with all that uh, goodwill friendliness joy that is spread all around you know that was the perfume he left behind you know and uh, it is no mean feat you know today that there are so many people who remember him and so many who have come specially for him you know times have passed it's 15 years now you know but uh, people remember him and you always ready whenever dipti calls whatever it may be you know i have the secret world congress next week and i just realized i have eleven presentations to make and number of committee meeting reports etc to go through you know so but still when dipti said i could not say no i said definitely for definitely for a short period of time i'll be there as i always it's a very very sort of fond quote of mine you know a teacher always lives by his students you know and uh, i have been fortunate i have been fortunate because i never really try to t- 
teach anybody anything you know it's never it's it's not my personality you know to teach anybody anything you pick up whatever you want you know i mean i'm operating you see the result you like it the way it happened you saw that the result was good you saw the steps you saw the planning you like it you take it you don't like it don't take it you know it's it's up to you you know so i never really sort of believed in spoon feeding i believed in exercising the mind in trying to find out why is the guy doing what he is doing how is he doing it you know what is he actually doing you know and what are the outcomes of that you know and that in itself is the greatest learning i think book knowledge journals are there always to supplement you know a teacher but i think the great job of a teacher is to guide is to point the way you know so this is the way you can do it you know and uh, that is the reason probably i think i have uh, you know the intelligent lot stuck to me the other lot wants spoon feeding you know they want a sir what did sir teachers you know nothing absolutely never taught us anything but i'm not the one to teach you anything you know i'm not there to teach you who am i to teach you anything you know and that has been my philosophy in life you know i mean you pick up you pick up and i'm not the only teacher there are 10 teachers here who can teach you know and even now i keep learning from my students you know from time to time you know so what is this concept of teaching you know okay you are a mentor you have given a direction a sense of direction when you're taught or when your student is in difficulties you suggest a way forward you know that is a sort of ideal teacher student relationship i feel you know rather than really holding hands rather than trying to teach them steps of surgery i mean you know if you know your basics if you know the sort of pathology which is present you know your mechanics you know your anatomy you can devise your own methods you know so i have always valued principles never really techniques you know techniques you can create you know and uh, i will not really exaggerate that uh, every time when i go for a surgery it's fresh thinking i never go with a mind that oh i have done 500 of these you know no i'm still worried you know what am i going to do how am i going to do it many a times i'll get up early in the morning i'll go through my books i'll go through the anatomy books you know and uh, sort of uh, what looks it's not always effortless i mean i struggle at times but what looks relatively effortless i should say has a lot of preparation which goes behind you know as happens in all walks of life you know now you made two propositions you know thinking big well to be honest i never thought big you know i never thought big but i had a vision okay if you call having a vision as something big well that's fine you know i have a vision for things so i had a vision that i love children and children have orthopedic problems these orthopedic problems there must be someone who can take care someone who can multiply those skills in others or replicate those skills in others and as a result you know others should be able to take care of children and uh, simple calculation says that there are 500 million children but how many pediatric orthopedic surgeons we have so this is the field which is ever growing you know and uh, no one can go hungry in this field you know and you have passion you have the aptitude this is a field to get into you know. i mean money all comes money comes name comes fame comes you know satisfaction comes everything comes you know if you're passion passionate about anything you know and that is what i have learned from from life you know multitasking was your other sort of point you know and uh, multitasking it i can tell you that it's very very stressful at times you know and uh, you have to keep long hours if you multitask but then you mentioned that uh, i'm always like a curious boy you know and when somebody offers me something you know i i am very curious you know what is going to happen there like uh, dipti told me and i never knew what you are going to talk you know i just got your mail to say that it is multitasking and thinking big you know i never never knew that it was anything to do with me you know but i was always sort of like a curious boy wanting to know like you know what is going to happen what am i going to learn what am i going to impart you know and as a result i get caught up in so many things it's relatively very difficult for me to say no to people you know largely because of the goodness of heart maybe you can call it you know probably not as smart work as you said you know but uh, i do it you know and uh, i always emerge richer for whatever i have done you know richer in the sense that i have gained 
I have gained ideas. I have gained a way of thinking. I have gained a direction from whatever interaction I have had. You know, so I'm keen for that, and that is the reason I take on so much. You know, and because of taking on so much, you have to multitask. You have to get to the point. You have to find out what is important in this. You know, what is your priority? You know, and how are you going to do it? And one value which is that of detachment. You know, you mentioned. You know, so that is like a full focus. in what you are doing i think to the exclusion of everything else in the world you know, i think that is the one quality which can make you multitask you know because at that time you are giving your 100% to that job and then you move on you know you go to the next job and you give your 100% you know so i can go on i think i don't know if i have time really but uh, this can become like a sermon rather than a, <laughs> a sort of a concluding remark you know but uh, thank you very much rujuta you have got me back many many years right from the time i sort of uh, branched out into pediatric orthopedics yes interesting i remember you very well you mentioned about your student days but i also remember you as an intern you know and as an exceptional intern you know because i never saw interns really work hard in the wards you know i never saw them attend emergencies never saw them spend time in the wards more than what was absolutely necessary to get that signature you know that boss's signature at the end of one month or 15 days or whatever you know but you were the one who worked extremely hard as an intern you know you made your mark as an intern you came came to us at jj hospital you did your internship so sincerely you learned a lot you know and then i was delighted to see that you're back into pediatric orthopedics after your stint at bombay hospital you know so Yes, I I think you have done yourself proud. You have done a great job. You have nurtured the whole department of uh, Vadia Childrens, and uh, you have student now, so you can understand this relationship between a Very teacher and a student, and a teacher who has students, and you know who has a teacher. You know, so you have a teacher, you have a student, and this sort of seepage of uh, values. sort of invisibly which goes on from one generation to the next to the next is called passing on the torch passing on the flame you know and i hope i have done whatever best i could i am hope all my students will do the best they can to pass on you know in different ways i mean each of us has a personality of our own and each of us can do things differently in the combined efforts of all of us will be the change which the world will witness So thank you all. Thank you everyone for listening to me patiently. Thank you, Rujita, for all the laudatory things you said we'll about say. me. We'll say. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you, sir, thank for you, those. Thank you, Dipti, for the invitation, and Sandeep and Taral, all of you. Ashok Ram, I see every one of you. You know, Sangeet is here. Yes, it's great. You know, and I had some of my teachers, Dr. Tanna and Dr. Lard, also earlier. You know, so it was very thank nice. Thank you so much for joining us. Sir. Sorry? thank you sir thank you sir thank you thank for you. that wonderful insight into a teacher's mind and how things evolve and actually you gave us a, a blueprint or a pathway of how to pass on the torch across generations so thank you on behalf of the organizing team as well as uh, dipti and uh, it's really been inspirational uh, a privilege to listen to you on teachers day with your thoughts thank you um, thank you thank you sir so before i hand over to dipti for the thank you uh, uh, remarks and uh, comments i would like to hear from two uh, invitees from abroad dr john clegg and sally if she is here and dr parag sanchiti if he if he is still around and then over to you dipti for uh, the uh, concluding remarks and thank you john Well, thank you, Sandeep. Namaste, yes. and uh, thank you especially to Dipti for inviting me to this symposium on a truly wonderful man. Uh, when I look back on it, uh, I wonder how it was that we came to meet. Uh, it was obviously a combination of fate and serendipity. Uh, at the time, in two thousand and two, I was secretary of the British Society for Children's Orthopedic Surgery, and we had a meeting in London. that went quite well and it was really at the very end of that i was leaving the building 
um, when a friend of mine, Azriel Benaroya from America, motioned me across to meet this guy who was looking intently at a computer. Uh, and this was Joy. And he was showing an external fixation system, which seemed to be pretty new and pretty good. And that's when I first met him. It was only a, a meeting of about 15 minutes or so. Uh, but he did invite me to Mumbai to come and take part in an orthopedic, an Indian Orthopedic Association meeting talking about club foot. Um, that was wonderful. I had not been to India before and, uh, and it was a remarkable experience. Um, arising out of that, I ended up being invited to attend the polio surgical corrective camp uh, the following year. And that was, again, a truly remarkable experience. It, it, it was Dr. Nenny today who uh, explained how important it is to the rural populations to have such specialist treatment. And I'd soon appreciated that um, when I was there with Joy. Um, I was approaching retirement and I thought that perhaps, oh, well, I'm just going to go into the garden and read books. Uh, and it's without exaggeration to say that meeting Joy transformed my, la my life in a lot of ways, uh, not only orthopedically. Joy was a Rotarian, and uh, it was through the Rotary Club of DNR that the polio camps were organised. And I was, again, very impressed by all the things that they were doing, not knowing really anything about Rotary. Uh, so much so that when I got back to England and sometime later, I too became a Rotarian, uh, and we supported the project uh, in India um, very enthusiastically. This allowed me to visit India on a number of occasions. I've made so many friends, so many true friends there. And it's really very sad that, that over the last couple of years almost, we've not been able to meet again. But hopefully uh, that, that will pass by. Joy was an amazing man, an amazing orthopaedic surgeon, but a wonderful teacher. Not just in orthopaedics, but in all sorts of things. He had a, an elephantine memory. He had a fantastic um, appraisal of the world. And I remember on a trip very early on to Pune, he was driving and he's driving me along all the way. He was telling me historical stories, facts and whatever. And I do remember we were driving along a motorway and he, he pointed out the Vinca Rosa plants at the side of the road. He was saying, oh, we planted those. They're the only thing that goats won't eat. And I thought, oh, that's novel. Um, but then he said, oh, yeah, but the Vinca Rosa is the thing that Indian physicians going back a thousand years uh, used to treat tumours. And of course, this became vincristine. So it was things like that, that he was able to impart to you all the way. Uh, and it was a, <laughs> a truly remarkable uh, occasion. He was, however, very keen to pick up on new things. And Sally, who is here today, um, had introduced me to uh, ultrasound examination of, of baby's hips uh, and other regions. And it was through that that we could diagnose hip abnormality very early on. Joy was on to that straight away. And I remember in my first visit to, um, to Bashi, uh, Azil brought along an ultrasound machine and we were able to use that. And I could show him an osteomyelitis developing in the femur on a, in a young boy. Uh, and the look on his face was amazing. And he instantly picked up on this. Had he not sadly passed away, I'm sure he would have introduced ultrasound into India to the benefit of many, many tens of thousands in India of children who have uh, hip problems. It was that sort of thing that he, uh, he was always keen to, to get involved in new things. I was pleased that he could come to India on a couple of occasions, sorry, to England on a couple of occasions. Firstly, he brought Dr. Loud and they, they brought their external fixation system, which we demonstrated at our local district hospital. I remember Dr. Loud uh, for two things. One, that his early morning walk around my lawn uh, left a very large track, which took a long time to settle. And it, it was interesting to hear today about how he's enthusiastically doing that. Somehow, and I'm not sure how, he managed to bring a tray of very ripe mangoes. How he got them on the plane, how he got them through the customs, I have no idea, but I've never tasted such wonderful mangoes in my life. And it was Joy who showed me how to cut them and prepare them so that we could all eat them. So it wasn't just orthopedics, it was just sort of everything in life that we learned from him in a terrific way. And that carried on when we visited farms in India, uh, rural communities in India, temples and whatever. Joy could always tell you something and... and um, 
he, he was never short of anything to say. On that visit, uh, no, sorry, not on that visit, um, he had a, an amazing intellect, an amazing memory, and uh, in sure was, was a fantastic human being as well as an orthopedic surgeon. He was a humanitarian who cared for his patients and cared for the people that he knew. The last time I met him, sadly, was uh, around about August, just before he, I think it was August, July or August 2006, shortly before he died in September. I have the great pleasure to think that he and Yash came over to stay with me, um, and we had a wonderful, I think nearly two weeks, traveling around and doing things. I remember one morning getting up around about seven o'clock to find him already up and sitting in a chair in my lounge, reading my historical books. And I thought, oh yes, he was. This is this is the man. He was. He was forever trying to find out things. When we later on in the day went to Warwick Castle, he knew more about the castle and medieval history than I ever did, and I thought I was an expert. Um, this was the sort of thing that that he could always do, um, and it left a, a lasting impression on me um, and on everybody else. I think who knew him. So I only knew him really for four years. You, you folks have known him for a, a great deal longer. Um, but the impression that he made on me in, in that four years was, I think, echoed by all of that of which you have said. We shall never truly forget him. I've got a small shrine in my entrance with, uh, with um, a picture of Joy and Lord Ganesh. And uh, we meet and talk quite frequently. Um, but that's the way of the world. And he was such a wonderful man. <clears throat> and thank you for inviting me here to say a few words for him. They are from the heart, and he will never, never be missed. Thank you. Thank you. That was great, John. Thank you. And we really miss you at all the camps that we had great fun with Joy at. Uh, I think Parag has some other engagement. He would like to go before Sally if that isn't, that isn't a problem. Parag, can you just... Yes, uh, uh, thank you so much and a great program. It's been a great learning. Sandeep, Dipti, Ashok, it's been fantastic. Now, knowing Joy was a great pleasure and a great honor. Uh, my association with him was through the fracture fixation course and you know that uh, course became a great friendship. He was a true teacher and I think to organize this program on this Teacher's Day is the biggest tribute we can give him. And uh, as they say, Better than a thousand days of intelligent study is a day to be with a great teacher. And that great teacher for us uh, uh, was Joy. You know, Joy has taught us so many things. He has touched so many lives. He was really instrumental in doing so many things. And in the short period that he was here, he, he created so many memories and so many ideas he has given us that which will last us a, lot, a lifetime. So I just want to say to Dipti and uh, uh, Dipti and Joy's children that uh, he was an amazing uh, uh, husband, he was an amazing father, but also he was an amazing friend to so many and an amazing doctor to so many patients. Uh, with that, I want to uh, wish all my teachers here a happy Teacher's Day and uh, Dipti, we need to do more things in the future to keep his legacy and his memory uh, going, uh, which we will. Uh, thank you, Sandeep, uh, for inviting me to say a few words. And this program has really been a great learning. And thanks to Joy for that. He will be really thank missed. You. Thank, thank you, Bharat. Th thank you so much. Uh, is Sally here? Sally? Can you? Yes, John, you're, you're, yeah, you yeah please. Please, Sally, go ahead. Um, I have to thank initially John Clegg, who asked me if Joy could come to one of the courses that I was running in England about the use of ultrasound to detect infant hip dysplasia. And it was when Joy came to the course that I met this force that was Joy <laughs> <Penaka>. <laughs> Um Joy invited us back to India um, for several wonderful visits, um, both to run hip courses. And then as we were there to run hip courses, he suggested um, in his inimitable way that we could also help at the polio corrective surgery camps that were taking place, which were an amazing eye-opener. 
um, to all of us to visit rural areas in India and see the amazing work that was being done by volunteers. Um, he invited me when, on one occasion with the ultrasound machine that John was talking about that Azrael Benaroya had bought. Um, I was able to show Joy on a four month old baby that it was possible to see the spinal dysraphism that this child had using ultrasound rather than the MRI that Joy thought the child was going to have to go to. Um, and Joy again picked up on this with enormous enthusiasm and invited me back to speak at the most wonderful multi-professional, multi-faculty um, course on or day on um, spina bifida in Mumbai. Um, the things about Joy that I can sum up really were that he was inspirational. He had endless enthusiasm. He had a very well-developed sense which he imparted of service and the importance of service to one's community. He also imparted to me the ability to see the faults in one's own country and to be able to laugh at them. And also to our, my lasting delight, he introduced me to dear Dipti and the three children, um, which has been a wonderful legacy for us. Um, his going when he did so young was an enormous loss um, to not only the national, but the international community. And um, I just am so grateful that I knew him when I did. Thank you, Sally. Thank you for Thank the you kind so words. Uh, we have two more people I see here. One is Mongal Parihar and second is Milin Kulkarni. If they are around, would they like to say a few words? Mongal, are you here? I am, I am. I don't have so, a, I, I don't have a very good uh, connection, unfortunately. I'm out of town, so I'll, I'll just we, we can do hear it you. on. Yeah, I'll just do it on uh, audio. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> one of the biggest things was uh, we used to call him Jolly Giant in uh, <laughs> when 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 he was in uh, KM as as a resident, and as everybody has pointed out, his sense of uh, confidence. Um, the joke we had about Joy was if he quotes you a fact, he will tell you uh, page number 52, paragraph number three, uh, <laughs> you know, sentence number four. <laughs> and if you actually go and check that book, it may not be there. <laughs> And you point it out to him and he, he will give his typical, you know, the big laugh. But his, his confidence was... No, no, he'll say, Zuna edition bagitlas tu. Tsukitsa ah, edition bagitlas. Right. <laughs> but as, as everyone has, has pointed out, uh, he was always, you know, looking to do more. How can I get more done? Something uh, different. Uh, I, I just, I mean, I know that he, he organized all of those uh, hip uh, ultrasound courses. I just got to know how it all kind of uh, came about. Uh, the Umex fixator, his, his interest in that. And because he was in Chembur, we were, we were sort of friends even before uh, the orthopedic part of it. His loss was... Uh, a shock at that age. But uh, <clears throat> the sort of one thing I, I take away from it is that he left a lot of uh, friends, he left a lot of uh, students with so much uh, positivity that even today, after so much time, you know, we, we remember him uh, fondly. So that's that's Thank it. You. 
thank you thanks thanks magal for sharing your thoughts milind are you here milind kulkarni it doesn't look like so i think i'll hand over to dipti to sum up can you hear me yes good evening everybody thank you is a small word to describe what i feel today overwhelmed is more like it thank you my dear faculty members for carrying out this beautiful program a tribute to joy's passion for learning and teaching It's indeed an honor for me to have been given this opportunity to give the vote of thanks on behalf of Saraswati Foundation today evening. I'm ever so grateful to the entire orthopedic fraternity for their unstinted support at all times. In January 2007, as we approached Joy's first birth anniversary, I wanted to do something that would make Joy really happy and realize that he was the happiest while teaching someone. not necessarily orthopedics it could be technology or cooking or even sewing or making knots for that matter but teaching was his passion he strongly believed that knowledge has to be shared knowledge when shared grows manifold but if kept to oneself dies with you and hence he gave saraswati foundation the motto work learn teach with this in mind i called dr ajay puri and shared my thoughts with him Ajay dropped in the same evening and within minutes charted out the program guide for the first Dr Joy Patankar Memorial Training Initiative a clinically oriented intensive program which would benefit exam going students and which included exam like patient presentations to a panel of examiners besides lectures on important topics the response to this initiative from students as well as teachers was so overwhelming that we went on to organize and conduct 18 such teaching courses ajay i cannot thank you enough for formulating the entire initiative including the spontaneous write up on joy the program guide as well as the brochure and dr sandeep patwardhan for helping me implement this initiative through the years i take this opportunity to thank the deans of all hospitals in mumbai who permitted us to conduct the pg training in initiative in their esteemed institution dr avinash supe dr sandhya kamath dr yev lekar late dr ranana avre dr suleiman merchant a special thank you to dr k h sancheti sir and dr parag sancheti for inviting us twice to conduct the pg course at their esteemed institution the sancheti hospital pune since this was a clinically oriented program it could not have been possible without the support of the department heads a big thank you to dr vijay laheri dr asim parekh dr arvind goregaonkar dr jayaram jagyasi and the coordinators who played a pivotal role in making patients available for the presentations dr dinsha padiwala dr harshad argekar the late dr steve rocha the highlight of the pg course was its speakers and the esteemed panel of examiners dr harish pende has been the first speaker for 15 out of 18 courses I never felt anxious when Harish was the first speaker. Harish, who is Joy's classmate from KEM, has walked in five minutes beforehand and has enabled us to start every course at nine a.m. sharp on a Saturday morning. Thank you, Harish, for being so punctual and for your invaluable contribution. Dr. Gautam Javeri, our first speaker on spine, day two, a Sunday morning, he was always on time, except one Sunday morning. Gautam having had a bhelpuri party the previous evening overslept but luckily for me as was always my habit i called him at 8:30 am just to check where he was he sounded sleepy but woke up at the start and rushed down to join us at 9 am sharp such is his commitment to the program dr ashish babhulkar known for his lectures and slides on shoulder willingly shared his slides to be used as study material for every program that we conducted whether he was a speaker or not and so did all of our speakers dr ram chadda dr sudeep warrior dr anil bhatia dr vibhas das gupta dr sangeet kavale dr hemant wakankar dr madhav khadilkar dr mihir bapat who are joyce contemporaries supported the program unconditionally 
डॉक्टर स्टारल नागता बिनौती शेट रुजुता मेहता आलरिक आर्जिस अब्दुल भास्कर तुषार अग्रवाल मनीष अग्रवाल समीर दलवी अभय नेने संजय गरुडे संजय धर नौशाद हुसैन मंदार आगाशे सुजाता अय्यर अमोल रेके रूता कुलकर्णी राजेश पारसनेस योगेश पंचवाग चेतन प्रधान चेतन पुरम अर्जुन बेगस अभिजीत वाहेगावकर द लेट डॉक्टर केतन खुर्जेकर एंड मेनी मोर आई थैंक यू ऑल फ्रॉम द बॉटम ऑफ माय हार्ट I'm indeed indebted to the stalwarts of orthopedics who have always agreed to be our esteemed panel of examiners. A salute to the master on Joy's behalf, a guru, a guide, and a father figure to Joy, Dr. N. S. Large Sir. When, whenever I have called upon him to request him to be an examiner, his answer has been, "Joy sathi ahe na, magmi nakki eda." Sorry. such is his affection for joy which continues till date dr didi tanna sir he answers my call and always says ha dipti i'll be there and it's the same answer from dr engal halikar sir i'm truly thankful to the both of you a special thank you to dr kapitkar sir who made it a point to enthusiastically attend most of our courses whether they were in mumbai or pune I also thank him for inviting us to conduct the course in Nashik, and then conducting it single-handedly in my absence. And also thank all the faculty from Nashik. The third course that we organized was the dedicated pediatric orthopedic course, and I profusely thank Dr. G. S. Kulkarni sir for having spent the entire weekend in Mumbai with us. And I'm eternally grateful to Dr. Ashok Johari sir for his invaluable time and contribution. as well as dr b d athani sir for his valued participation dr vikas agashe dr a r karkhanis dr c j thakkar dr s s mohanty dr sri s k shrivastav dr vilas jok dr mahesh yagnik dr ramesh prabhu i'm sorry dr ram prabhu dr ashok desai dr j b panse dr madhav borate i thank you all i cannot forget the contribution of the faculty from radiology Dr. Ravi Ramakantan, Dr. Bhavan Jankaria, Dr. Anagha Joshi, Dr. Uday Pawar, Dr. Abhimanyu Kelkar, a big thank you. You added value to our program. A special mention to Mr. Nagesh Nayak for imparting his knowledge on orthotics and braces. I also take this opportunity to thank Dr. Sally Scott, Dr. Joy John Clegg from UK, and Professor Reinhard Graf from Austria. who stood by me and enabled me to conduct the master course in goa and the graph course in pune and dr sanjay lalwani of Bhar bharti vidyapeet pune i'm eternally grateful to dr john clegg from coventry uk for relentlessly coming to india twice a year for the past 15 years with his team to conduct the dr joy patankar musculoskeletal surgery camps all over maharashtra in association with the rotary club of devnar today i thank dr ashok sham of ortho tv for giving us a platform for this beautiful evening and dr neeraj bijlani for the technical support last but not the least i had to just voice my hesitant idea that it's been 15 years that joy has gone and i would like to do a program when spat dr sandeep patwardhan was immediately on it like a man with a purpose He has been a dear friend and kaka to my children, and words would not be enough to thank him. He, along with Dr. Taral Nagda and Dr. Premal Naik, with dedicated support from Dr. Sheetal Parekh from Connecticut, U.S., and Dr. Sandeep Hemadi from Wales, U.K., have taken Saraswati Foundation to an international level with the IFIX, International Fractures in Children Symposium, since 2014, and we have. haven't looked back ever since there are memories and there's a legacy as a loving husband and father joy left behind countless memories but as an orthopedic surgeon and academic he left behind a legacy in the words of the greek philosopher pericles what you leave behind is not engraved in stone monuments but is woven into the lives of others I look forward to organizing more teaching programs and in my own small way continuing Joy's legacy. Thank you and wish you all a very happy Teachers Day.
good evening everyone thank you dipti thank you that was really heartfelt uh we we truly are uh, indebted to joy for inspiring us he was a role model and most of us are doing our best to carry forward the inspiration giving it on to the next generation as dr johari mentioned as well as making sure that through ifix the passion for teaching doesn't die out and we keep on propagating and handing over the torch which joy so gracefully gave it to me and a lot of other people with those uh, final few words i would like taral to say the concluding remarks and we can all call it a day yeah the only thing i would say is till the time we meet again uh, happy teachers day every day is a teachers day because teacher doesn't teach only once he continues to do his job so thank you everyone for attending the program and uh, i hope everyone has enjoyed this as much as all of us did. thanks thank you thank you thank you bye bye everyone bye sir